many years now we've been uh, very interested in developing energy efficient technologies here in the lab uh, and about five years ago uh, we pioneered warm and hot water cooling for uh, efficient data centers. So this is on one hand enabled us to really reduce cooling costs um, but also enabled us to uh, reuse the heat recovered from, from servers. This technology has been brought even forward to uh, enable efficient energy generation. So we have um, combined highly effective thermal management with uh, photovoltaic technology, enabling us to also recover the heat in combined photovoltaic and thermal systems. Um, so giving an overall uh, greatly added value for the overall system. Um, taking this one step further now in the Thrive project, we're concerned about adding value to the recovered heat. Uh, the issue is when the temperature level of the recovered heat is too low, it's not of great use and you have to operate a conventional heat pump to raise its temperature level. Um, this requires costly electrical energy. Um, if the temperature level is too high for your application, then you're basically wasting high-grade heat um, for a low-grade heat application. So in the Thrive project, together with our partners, uh, we're developing a thermally driven heat pump technology uh, that does not use a lot of electricity to operate, but basically you can run off waste heat or cheap renewable thermal energy to provide this heat pump effect. So we're replacing the mechanical compressor of a conventional heat pump um, with a type of adsorber heat exchanger um, that can operate a heat pump cycle. In this project, it's not only material science and not only component development, really the whole system is also in the focus of this project. And this is quite special. There are not many large projects uh, which really have this scope from materials to the entire system. Well, this is a very, very interesting and uh, research topic. Uh, we are working on sorption technology in different projects. And I think uh, not only for uh, heat pump development, also for long-term storage. Uh, sorption technologies will become a more and more important topic in the next 10-20 years. I'm designing the material structure specific to the material and the chemistry we are using and thus uh, optimizing in the end the effic efficiency of the system. Uh, we are in charge of the first work package dealing with the material side. So what we want is absorption materials that basically have the same performance as conventional material but with much less space. So we would try to reduce the volume or to increase the storage density to make those systems smaller and more compact and more performant. Something that's in the infant's shoes at the moment, so it is being developed. Uh, there are thermal energy grids and systems uh, being developed worldwide now. And uh, I think this heat pump is, is a very uh, promising tool for increasing the efficiency uh, using renewables uh, to substitute electricity. So in Thrive we say or we propose that the Thrive system will save electricity in the future energy system in Switzerland. And with that we think that we're going to to help cutting down for example CO2 emissions in future energy, energy supply in Switzerland. And us from PSI we're going to investigate if that's really beneficial for the environment and if yes, um, with which cost related to that. So that's called the sustainability assessment of the Thrive system. Hi, we are in the LESBAT, the laboratory for solar energy and building physics in the School of Engineering and Business, VO. LESBAT is involved in this project for the definition of application scenarios and to test the machine for determining its thermal performances. Here you may have a view on the test bench that will be used in the project. An adsorption heat pump uses a solid adsorbent and a um, refrigerant which can be plain water. And um, the way that the thermal driven heat pump works now is that when we connect uh, these two chambers then uh, the solid adsorbent is going to adsorb a large amount of water vapor. Um, you probably know this from uh, uh, desiccants that are included in ele electronic packaging or in bags. Uh, it, this is the same phenomenon. So in doing so, uh, the adsorbent is heating up as it adsorbs the water vapor and the other vessel is cooling down uh, as the water evaporates. So once the material has become saturated with the water vapor, it's possible now to use the thermal energy from a renewable source or uh, waste heat 
um, to drive out the water vapor again. Uh, in doing so, the material is dried and the water vapor is passed into the other vessel, um, thereby condensing here, again releasing heat. Uh, that re-establishes the initial state of the system and we can uh, continue again. So this way we can both uh, generate cooling through the evaporation of water uh, as well as heat through the um, adsorption and also condensation effects. And this way we can provide both heating and cooling using this thermally driven solid sorption heat pump.